Realtor commission fees are going away. Yay, no more having to pay commissions, commissions for the seller, no more having to pay commissions to the buyer's agent. That's what you're hearing. Commissions are going away, realtors are overpaid, it's over for them. That's the narrative you've been hearing, but that's not the case. So please turn, tune in for our show today. I'm sitting down with Paige Fingerhut with Beach Equities. We're gonna dive into, if you're a buyer, what does this mean to you? And if you're a seller, what's this mean to you? Is there really savings that are, that are gonna go on or are things gonna remain the same? We, in this video, are gonna do a deep dive on what it really means to you, because that's what matters. Let's not listen to the headlines, because that's only gonna confuse you. We want to put you in a position to win, to get you the, pri uh, the home or the investment of your dreams. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, it's Juan Huizar here, president of Sage Real Estate, and I'm sitting down with Paige Fingerhut from Beach Equities. She's a broker at Beach Equities, super successful agent here in Long Beach, longtime agent, uh, her father was doing real estate for a long time before Paige took over. And Paige is a friend of mine. We network a lot. We, we call each other on different topics. Uh, we refer each other business. So I'm, I'm excited to have Paige here. Now, the reason I have Paige here today is because everyone is talking now, whether you're a buyer, you're a seller, you heard about a lawsuit affecting realtors and you have a lot of uh, ideas, opinions, uh, Maybe some of them are misconceptions, but we're gonna dive in today to what exactly happened. But more importantly, what does that mean to you, the buyer, the seller, whether you're buying a single family home, a condo, or maybe you're buying your first apartment building, what does that mean to you? Do you get to save money? Possibly. Is it all gonna be the same? Maybe. So make sure you tune in while we dive into what we're calling the NAR, National Association of Realtors Settlement Agreement. Paige, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk about this. I, I know a lot of people, and from the very beginning, Paige was following this, like she was so invested into what was happening with the settlement. I would call her, she was like, oh my, oh my gosh, Juan, did you hear this is happening? I'm like, Paige, <laughs> why does that matter? But that's why I asked Paige to be here today. So um, I, I think where I wanna get started for, for our viewers here is high level, there was a lawsuit. Tell us about the lawsuit and kind of what happened. And then we'll get into what that means to the buyers and sellers. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, I'll, I'll start with where we're at today, which is that uh, news broke about a month ago and it was a proposed settlement for this lawsuit. Now, where we're sitting today is that that lawsuit or proposed settlement has been preliminarily approved. So going back, this was a class action lawsuit uh, against the National Association of Realtors, or brought against them, and multiple other large broker parties. So the other reason Juan and I network is that we're both small boutique independent brokers who run our own businesses. Um, we're not, you know, large corporations. And this lawsuit was against NAR, but also against large corporate, corporate excuse me, large corporate brokers. So there have been multiple settlements and people adding on to this settlement, but to break it down, the crux of the conversation is around antitrust conversations. And some consumers felt, buyers and sellers like yourself, that they didn't know that realtor fees or commissions were negotiable. Now, these fees have always been negotiable. And in fact, that's a large part of what we do in working with our clients is putting listing agreements together to sell property and determining compensation being offered. But the argument was made that this was ultimate price fixing. And so ultimately, instead of paying billions of dollars, um, NAR has settled to the tune of 418 million, and that protects almost all of its members. There are a few brokerages that have created their own settlements. I don't think we want to get into that too much, but ultimately just be aware that it's not just NAR. There are multiple um, parties at play. And so where we sit today is really that the proposed settlement has been preliminarily approved. It's scheduled to be fully approved in the courts by November. But ultimately last Friday it was filed and that started a clock of 150 days where it, it will get implemented. So we're looking at, I think that date is actually in September, but people are still saying everything will be implemented by July. Okay, thank you for kind of 
covering all that now. High level summary. High level summary. Now, um, I've been following this very closely as well. And here's what I know. It, it, now, it's supposed to implement sometime in July. Some people are saying mid-July. Some people are saying at the end of July. I think both of our companies are implementing these, these things now because um, the way that we do business has been altered a little bit. Just the process has been altered. And probably the best way to describe this um, to both buyer and seller is, um, and I'm gonna steal an example for one of my mentors and friends, Sharon Srivatsa. And the way that he put it, it's the best way that I could understand it is, we're on Google Maps. We're trying to get from uh, Laguna Beach over to downtown Los Angeles, okay? And one route gives me an hour and nine minutes. The other route is an hour and 12 minutes. So there's a three minute difference. And the way that Sharon likes to put it is ultimately the goal is to either buy or sell a property. And there's gonna be, and now there's an additional route to take. There was the route that we used to always take and the way that we always did things. This time we're it's it's going to be a separate route and it might be a little bit longer and the reason why it's a little bit longer is cuz there's a little bit more explaining and more paperwork. And so ultimately the destination is going to remain the same. You the consumer get to either buy what you want to buy or you get to sell what you want to sell. It's just going to take us um, on our end a little more explaining and a little more paperwork. So, with that being said, I think that that's the best way to describe it. What does this, I mean, okay, we're dealing, we're dealing with sellers right now because I'm going to go straight into, so we're yeah. going to start off with sellers. What does this mean to sellers? Because I know what the sellers are asking mm -hmm. me. What does it mean to them? They're saying, hey, Juan, I heard I don't have to pay any realtor fees anymore. Correct. That's what they're saying, yes. right? So ultimately, <clears throat> would you work for free? No. So we're not working for free. And seller's agents and buyer's agents are not working for free. The difference in how realtors or brokers or real estate agents are going to get paid is that previously our MLS was a, an agreement between brokers, right? I'm a listing agent. I am, by putting my property in the MLS, I'm agreeing to clearly cooperate with another broker and pay their fee. That's streamline how it was going to work out. And there's actually a lot of graphics floating around. Um, maybe we can show one um, about an old way and a new way, right? Yes. And so the old way um, was what I just described. The new way is that th there's options, right? So ultimately, a seller can choose to offer compensation to a buyer's agent, which is really going to be our recommendation in most scenarios, because it's ultimately going to bring your buyer to the property and the buyer's agents are the ones who work with the qualified buyers that you want for your property if you're a listing agent, right? Which we both primarily are. Um, one thing, this is a little, this is a little side note. Okay. But one thing that I was thinking about where you and I are in good positions from our past experience is that the contracts are gonna be limited to 90 days and I deal with that in probate already because we're limited to 90 days by code. All right, Paige, so what you said is um, now the seller could decide mm -hmm. if they want to pay the buyer's agent commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I sit down with a lot of sellers. We sell a lot of properties here in Long Beach. And the question is, would I recommend a seller to not pay a buyer's agent commission? Well, I'll tell you this, that it would definitely put you at a competitive disadvantage. We've done a few stats and we've gone back 12 months on all types of properties, duplex, triplex, and fourplex properties. And what we've seen is 98% of the time, there's a commission being paid out to the buyer's agent, okay? And so um, there is a trend that the buyer's agent needs to be compensated because the buyer's agent is not gonna be motivated to do the work if there's not compensation. Now I get it that now I guess we're getting rid of the word co uh, compensation and it's gonna be called something else. But ultimately, if you're a seller, you need to ask yourself the question is, am I gonna publicly, through a website, no longer the MLS, because we could no longer put the commission split. Publish it. Mm -hmm. Publish it on the MLS. So that was like one big rule. Or any other syndicated sites like that. Correct. But as a broker, we're both brokers, that commission could be definitely advertised on our websites. 
I think there's some rules around IDX. Like we okay. would have to be careful in that, but yeah. there are some IDX rules. But yes, we would put it on on <clears throat> publicly. So so to kind of break this down for you, it's 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 two routes. If you're a seller, we either find out what you're willing to pay to the buyer's agent right now, or we leave it up to who? The buyer's agent to tell you what they want to get paid. Okay. Now, in most cases, in most cases, the buyer's agent, the buyer's not going to want to pay the buyer's agent commission. So that, that presentation, and we'll get into that next. Not even want to. It's going to be really difficult. They're bringing their down payment. They're paying closing costs. Not even want to. In most cases, they, ca they actually can't afford to. She's saying, it's, it, Paige is right. It, it's, it, I'm saying wants to. Well, they probably don't want to, and they probably can't afford to. And, and listen, it's, it's already expensive enough. We're both in Southern California. It's already expensive enough to buy. So a couple things. You could decide with your listing agent at the listing table, I'm going to pay so much to the buyer's agent, or you're going to leave it up for chance. Because you might think, well, I'm, I'm not going to agree to that today. And that's fine. You don't have to. But the buyer... The buyer's agent is going to submit an offer and say, I want so much commission. And now you as the seller are going to have to be negotiating that with every single offer that comes in. Because I would tell you this, that in any offer that comes through, the majority of the offers, the buyer's agent is going to want to be compensated by the, the, the seller. Okay. So that's kind of, that's, that's, that's what I see happening. What are yeah. your thoughts there? Ultimately, I think, you know, we deal with savvy clients and they're going to instruct us, hey Juan, hey Paige, show us all offers. Well, the offer might be asking for the buyer compensation to be, pay to be paid, or the offer might be saying, hey, I've gotten the buyer commission paid on the, not on the side, but on my own, so to speak. I'm the buyer paying the commission and here's my adjusted purchase price based on that. So I think, our job as agents is going to be pr to pr help present the offers in an apples to apples kind of situation where you as the seller can see what your true net is based on all these different moving pieces that Juan just explained that it's going to be our job to lay it all out for you as to what's the true net of every single offer for you to review. Paige, because one of the misconceptions is, and, and, and I want you to talk about this, is that realtors are, are now going to make less money. What think, do you say to that? I think there's opportunity to make more for the savvy agent, to be honest. Okay. Because I uh, people get excited. Hey, you know, sometimes people are saying, hey, they really they really got the realtors, well, <laughs> you know, and, okay. and, and they're getting overpaid. And, and, and I know that there's a narrative out there that that yeah. might be the case. And so, and sorry. So other models are for sure going to emerge. Uh, like this is coming. Other models will emerge. They're probably will be some flat fee offers. There probably will be some fee for service. Like I'll have a menu, I'll write an offer for this fee. You know, I mean, some agents, we already have that in the marketplace now. And I think, um, you know, frequently it's referred to as discount brokers. And I think we're not going to be able to say that because if fees were always negotiable, what determines discount, right? Like, um, that came straight out of a board presentation I just sat through. So I think that's that's on the realtor side, but for consumers, you're going to see a menu of services and it, it's the old story of like, you get what you pay for, right? Um, the, you're gonna have full service and I do think those um, like menus are coming, but yeah, yeah, Paige, you said something really important, and this kind of takes me back to sitting down with a potential seller, um, and we call it at the listing table, but that's where we're discussing value. We're going to be discussing marketing. We're also going to be discussing what is your goal, right? Go going back to that destination, because the destination in, uh, that I showed earlier in the map is really, in most cases, from a seller's perspective, what they net. So when I use the word net is what's the overall profit when it's all said and done? Okay. And so from the very beginning, if you know what you want to net, then realtors like Paige and I, who are skilled at what we do, we're going to make sure that you net what you want, your actual goal, your best case scenario, um, and, and not anything less, right? Because we're going to make sure that you get the price and terms that are acceptable to you. 
And we're probably going to be recommending, strongly recommending that, hey, although you don't, you, you don't have to do anything, you also don't have to hire a listing broker. Because I had a client say, hey, I don't want to pay the buyer's agent commission. I said, okay, tell me, why are you paying my commission? Oh, well, man, I, I need someone to market it. I, need, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you know that you had the option to do a for sale by owner this entire time. This is a great analogy. So if you've always had the option, you never had to sign up with a realtor, but you did. Why? You did because you thought that you were going to net more. In fact, it's, it's, it's a fact that people who sell for sale by owner, who in their opinion saved all this money and I don't have to pay those greedy realtors, they actually netted less. So this is a real life stat is that if you do a for sale by owner, you're gonna make less than your neighbor who paid a commission because your neighbor was smart to say, I wanna make sure that everyone knows about my property and I'm gonna leave it up to an expert to position my property, to get me the price and terms that are best to me. And ultimately when you compare the two, the person who hired a realtor always nets more. That's just the reality. So. I'm gonna add on to that. If that's all right. No, please. (laughs) So <laughs> you can leave this in or not. It's up to you. Okay. I'm fine with it. I was like, can I jump in? <laughs> no, go ahead. Of um, course. So I think that's a really important point, particularly because you and I both have clients who live out of state. And so in California, the for sale by owners, I mean, we just don't, when's the last time you saw a for sale by owner sign here? I, I see them every now and then. Uh, every now and then. Right. But in other states across the nation, which our clients live in because your multifamily expertise, my probate expertise, our clients live out of state frequently. So in their state where they're living, for sale by owners could be rampant. And in California, it's just not as much so. So I think it's a really important point that you made because our clients don't live in in California where we occasionally see a for sale by owner, so. Okay, so so Paige, so that kind of covers, so so to kind of wrap this up from a seller perspective. The seller side, yeah. You could choose and you have the right, but you kind of always had the right, but maybe, maybe this lawsuit, maybe you didn't know you had the right. Okay, so now you know that you can negotiate our listing fees, certainly. You could negotiate or not offer any buyer's agent fees. So now you know, so could that save you money? Possibly, but if we're talking about a net, and we go back to my example that if at the end of the day, the destination is you netting the most, we're gonna show you at the listing table that you're, you're still going to be having to pay something. Now, we're not gonna force you to do anything, but that's gonna be where you stand out from the rest. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that covers the, list, the, the seller side. The one change, and I'll let you speak to this, that's gonna happen on the buyer side is that there's gonna be an additional form that every buyer signs with every agent before seeing a property. So talk to us about that form, because that's required. In fact, we're already implementing it. We know a lot of other uh, people out there or brokers out there, competitors out there are probably gonna wait till it's the last minute. We're already putting this in motion because we think it's important. Talk to us about that form and what does that form say? So we're talking about the buyer broker agreement. Mm -hmm. And if you're a buyer entering this new environment, Um, you know, I think there's a few things you're going to need to be aware of there. There's, I think the change is going to be felt more on the buy side. So first of all, if you're a buyer now, you walk into any open house or you call a realtor to show you a house, or you look at the online portals, things like Zillow and Redfin, and you might click a button to schedule a showing. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go look at a house right now. Most of those are going away. So now you're going to be able as a buyer to go through open houses because listing agents will, I think, dominate open houses now, like the the procedures and the sign-ins and all that are going to be stronger. So you can go to an open house to see a house, or if you call a realtor to show you a house, they must have an existing agreement with you in place in order to show that house. That's going to end up looking a few different ways also. So the seasoned realtors who are not going to waste their time with clients that are not committed, pre-qualified, and we've explained to them the process and and they're on board. Realtors who work that way, they're gonna do a presentation, explain their value, and get a buyer broker agreement signed with that buyer. And you're gonna work with that agent 
those agreements are going to be for 90 days. You're going to work with that agent through that time to tour property. In fact, I think the language specifically says tour. I don't know the last, we don't, I don't think we really use that, but the language of the settlement uses that. So that's how that's going to work. What I like to equate it to is, um, like I just hired a photographer. I went through a discovery, like I scheduled online a discovery call with that photographer where we talked about what they do. Then they sent me a proposal of all their services and their, you know, everything that they provide. And then, um, then I had a commitment letter where I, you know, so now I think the process is going to change a little bit more like that. Um, certainly we prefer to meet with our clients in our offices, but sometimes it's zoom. Sometimes it's, it can't be helped. So it just depends. But the flip side to that, um, full service broker is that I think you're going to see some realtors scrambling the ones who haven't prepared, the ones who don't know what's coming, the ones who are sort of in denial that this is here. And what's going to happen is then an, a buyer who's like, I want to see this property right now today, get me in. It's going to be, okay, we're going to sign an agreement for this one property on this one day as a one-off. And then you as a buyer are going to end up signing like multiple agreements for multiple properties. And what's going to happen is actually, if you do that as a buyer, you're kind of going to be shooting yourself in the foot because you'll have created a variety, like a very confusing process. And then the house you ultimately want, you might've figured out a different agent and that's going to create some problems as well as I think with the 90 day limit, there's something called procuring cause where um, that's a little bit of jargon, but whatever realtor shows you the house is really who represents you to purchase that house. And I think that some issues can be created there. Anyhow, I just said a whole lot. Paige, so, okay, so I'm a buyer. I wanna go see a property. And, and I know we're using the word houses. Uh, this is gonna to apply to a duplex, triplex, and a fourplex. Now, uh, five, five units and above, mixed use, commercial, retail. This does not, not apply. A very specific National Association of Realtors said flat out, this does not affect commercial property. So what we're talking about today, um, if we're looking at commercial properties, that's going to be a different way. So don't worry about that. But in this scenario, listen, we sell a lot of fourplexes and sometimes we have open houses at fourplexes because there's one vacant unit. So a lot of this is still going to apply to us too. So I'm a buyer. There's a form. I sign a 90 day, but there's more to that. Oh yeah, age. for sure. Okay. So let's get into what the buyer needs to know when they sign a 90 day. So they're, they're vetting that realtor. Yes. They're making sure that that realtor is going to provide the services that they want, which will include not only access to properties, but also their negotiation skills. Also in some regard, I frequently, this is in my buyer presentation frequently is agent relationships, right? It's because huge. agent relationships are what get offers accepted. And I, we probably have to be careful about how we word that now, but like, that's really what gets offers accepted is not just who's written the best price, but who's gonna close the deal. And that falls to the agent and the buyer. Now, I wanna get to the most difficult part of that buyer representation yeah. agreement. Okay, now for anyone watching this, the buyer representation agreement has always, um, has always existed. Yeah. But the reason why it wasn't used as much because it wasn't a requirement. Now, part of the lawsuit, this is the second big change. The second big change is now it's required. Okay, so now it's required, but now we, at that buyer representation, you're, you, the buyer, are, are signing some level of agreement with, with, the, with, with the realtor that you want to work with, and we're also going to be discussing compensation. Right, so, what is the fee for service? So what's the mm -hmm. fee for service? So talk to us about the different options that a buyer could have. So... There's a couple ways that this can play out. One is that the buyer can pay the buyer's realtor, right? That's gonna work. The other is that, which is difficult for the buyer financially frequently. The other is that the buyer can request that the seller still pay the buyer's agent. That can still happen. Um, I think there's gonna be a few variations that might be a little I don't think we need to get into those, but just know that there's probably a few other variables that could create different scenarios there, but those are going to be the two most common. So let's say as a buyer, the agent says, this is my fee, like X, right? It's not to get into numbers, but let's say this is my fee X. And um, 
if the if the seller if the seller and the seller's agent are willing to consider paying the fee then we'll get the fee covered that way if they're not willing to pay that fee then this would still be your responsibility mr and mrs buyer yeah that's really how that goes yeah yeah so in the past i mean listen i like the way it worked in the past because i always told buyers this because buyers would call me and say hey I'm, I'm calling about that four unit building and i'm like great are you working with an agent no we're not i'm like listen the agent is essentially free because you're not paying for them the seller's paying for them feels free but isn't and that's actually the crux of the lawsuit correct. It, yeah correct but that but but that's the way that it used to be but now when you come to us well now we're negotiating at the table and we need to show you what it is that we're going to be doing right um for you to get you into the property that you want and so it's it's interesting that um the lawsuit i think the, the biggest change now is that the buyer and the buyer's agent need to negotiate amongst each other what that fee is going to be so we used to have okay i'm gonna address a few negotiation points we in the current times would negotiate in southern california and in fact like northern california is different and different states are different but in southern california we would negotiate the purchase price then inspections happen then repairs or some credit or concession would be negotiated roughly 10 days into the deal um now i think what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot more negotiation up front because you're going to be negotiating the purchase price of the home you're going to be negotiating i think agent commissions together in totality and then there's still going to be or I don't know if it's a new one or if it's going to be created, but there's going to be a way for a seller to offer concessions, not compensation, but concessions in our MLS system. My feeling is no seller is going to put a number in that box, like, and I don't think we're going to advise them to, but the box is going to be there. So it's commissions, concessions, as well as the ultimate price of the home. Those are now all on the table and are going to get sliced and diced in the negotiation at, that's going to be different for the buyer and the seller, truthfully. And so what this does, it makes it super confusing for the consumer. Yeah. And I, I get it. Someone somewhere in, in a lawsuit said this is going to protect the consumer. And all we're saying is it's really going to make it harder because I know a lot of really good buyer's agents. And um, when they're there speaking with you, the buyer, they're going to say, we require two and a half percent commission or that's what that's what we believe we're worth. OK. As an example. As an example. Someone could say less, someone could say more. And they're gonna say, we are so good at negotiating that we're gonna get the seller to pay that so you don't have to do it. Now, what happens if the seller doesn't wanna pay it? Well, now you, the buyer, would, would be required to pay that amount, okay? So it makes it tricky for the buyer. It really makes it tricky. Now, if, that's, if that scenario we believe is gonna happen, call it 80% of the time, nothing has changed for the seller because the seller now gets offers that say, here's the offer for your property. And by the way, you're paying two and a half percent commission in this example to the buyer's agent. And the buyer's gonna be like, nothing has changed. And in some situations, I guess the reason for this video is to show you that nothing has really changed. It's just, they, the way that we used to do it where the listing agent was the one offering uh, the commission, the split commission to the buyer's agent, They've gotten rid of that. Fine. Okay. We're not going to argue it. It's been decided. But now the seller is going to be in the hot seat. Are they going to be the ones who pay the buyer's agent commission? And ultimately, going back to the very most important part of all of this is what the seller nets, right? From a seller perspective. I know from the buyer's perspective, it's how um, much of a saving, how much of a savings can they that. get? Yeah. How much of a savings can they get? Now, yeah. here's the thing. If I'm a buyer, and I'm sitting down with someone and they say I'm at two and a half percent commission, I could say, well, I don't want to agree to that. Yeah, you can say that. And, and, and they could say, I want to offer less or I want to, I don't agree to that. I'm going to call another realtor. And then you can't go see the property. You could offer a flat fee. There's a variety of different ways. I mean, and I, so I think what that's all going to come down to too, and this is where agents are really going to be proving their value is, is truly like our analysis. So, we're going to be pulling all this information because we're going to be aggregating. Okay. This is what this property sold for, but here are all the fees that you're not seeing. Here are the concessions. Here are the commissions. Here's what that ultimate net actually looked like. So actually our value is going to be more important than ever putting all of that data together for our clients. 
Yeah, a lot of my friends are reaching out. Hey, man, I heard about this. How's it impact you? Uh, a lot of our business is commercial. So um, that, by the way, was always negotiable. And so we've been negotiating commissions uh, for the last 20 years. And in fact, there's there's two platforms. There's, there's the multiple listing service, which has to uh, go by the rules of, of no longer putting what the commission payout is because it's not allowed. Um, but the but the other platform, which is LoopNet on the commercial end, never reflected in anyways. And so they've kind of already been paying playing by that role anyways. That was gonna be my point, how we're both prepared for this yes. already. I'm already operating in those 90 days. Yeah. You're already operating in the commercial space that already works like this. Correct, yeah. correct. So um, any final words, Paige? Anything that, that, that impacts, I, we know that from our real estate perspective, there's a lot of drama and things and finger pointing right. going on, but I'm just saying the buyer and the seller, any final message to them? I think the final message that I would say is that who you hire matters more than ever now. And vetting your real estate agent matters because you want to make sure you're getting a full service experience. And that's going to save you money, whether you're on the buy side or the sell side. Um, it's going to impact how realtors do business quite a bit. And I think it's going to impact buyer and seller perception. But at the end of the day, a good realtor is going to guide you through the process so that you don't feel that impact from a stress and worry perspective. And also from a deal perspective of making sure that your asset or your, I mean, so this is where, I mean, for some people, some of our clients view the properties as assets, some it's their home, right? We're, we're dealing with both, but ultimately both of those are huge things and huge investments. And so I think I just want to leave people with the feeling that hiring a good professional is still going to save you money and net you more at the end of the day. And I agree with that. I think long, long are the days of like, how much is the fee? How much am I paying? Right. That's not the question that you could ask that question. You probably should ask that question. The thing is, because if I hire you, Paige, how much am I gonna net? And so here's what I want you to know. There's a lot of people that hire folks who do this part-time, folks who are you're related to, folks that, hey, this is my so-and-so's daughter's uh, friend who just got her license. You're gonna need experienced professionals more now than ever, more now than ever, because they're gonna put you in a position to get the home of your dreams, the investment of your dreams. There's more negotiating going now uh, that's gonna happen now than ever before. And so if you're working with someone who's negotiating every single day, do you think that benefits you? And I would say it absolutely does because to say, oh, hey, I'm gonna hire um, uh, a, a teacher friend of mine, he does this on the weekends, they are not negotiating every single day. They're just simply not. Nor are they building the uh, relationships, the agent relationships, which Paige and I know are critically important. And so um, to that point, the destination is going to remain the same. Things are going to change more now than ever. You're going to need a professional. Uh, if you're in Long Beach, please reach out to Paige. Reach out to me. We'd love to work with you. And that's all for now. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.